Assalamu alaikum. Hello everybody. Today we will talk about normal ultrasound measurements. In this video, we will review the normal ultrasound average measurements seen in our breaks, including any organ can be measured by ultrasound. We will begin with liver. Ultrasonography of the liver is one of the most routine investigations in which we assess the size texture and pathological changes it is a first line of investigation for differential diagnosis of suspected liver pathologies craniocaudal dimensions of the liver on mid clavicular line was measured with ultrasonography the liver measures craniocaudal length between 10 and 12.5 cm transverse diameter between 20 and 23 cm Liver span below 15 cm. Some causes of hepatomegaly are leukemia, storage diseases, neonatal hepatitis. Gold bladder. Sonography is used as the initial imaging technique for evaluating patients with suspected gold bladder disease. Because of its high sensitivity in the detection of gold bladder stones, its real-time character, speed, and portability. The normal gold bladder wall appears as a pencil thin echogenic line at sonography. The thickness of the gold bladder wall depends on the degree of gold bladder distension, and pseudo thickening can occur in the postprandial state. Anterior gold bladder wall less than 3 mm when it is well distended. The normal adult gold bladder measures from 7 to 10 cm in length and from 3 to 4 cm in transverse diameter. Common bile duct Ultrasound is a primary tool for assessment of the structure of biliary tree. Good color doubler capabilities when assessing vessels versus ducts. Scanning technique. The patient should be fasting. Begin with the patient's supine. Visualize the pancreas and visualize the common bile duct in the head of the pancreas. Follow the common bile duct back into the liver at porta hepatis. Measure the diameter of extra hepatic bile ducts. Here are the measurements of common bile duct. Age below 50 years is 5 mm, age below 60 years 6 mm, age below 70 years is 7 mm, and add 1 mm for each decade over age of 60 years. Maximum diameter of normal common hepatic duct is less than 5 mm. The maximum diameter of normal common bile duct is less than 9 mm. The maximum diameter of common bile duct post cholecystectomy between 10 and 12 mm. Portal vein The portal vein is the main vessel of the portal venous system which drains the blood from gastrointestinal tract, gallbladder, pancreas, and spleen to the liver. Portal vein resulting from the confluence of the splenic and superior mesenteric veins and drains directly into the liver, contributing to approximately 75% of its blood flow. Hepatic artery provides the remaining hepatic blood flow. The portal vein is visualized in the longitudinal axis from the splenomesentric junction to the liver hilum. The greatest anterior diameter is measured at the site where the hepatic artery crosses the portal vein. The upper limits of normal portal vein diameter between 30 and 60 mm, more than 20 to 30% increase with food and inspiration. Its flow direction is towards liver, hepatobetal, throughout entire cardiac cycle. Pancreas Pancreatic ultrasound can be used to assess for pancreatic malignancy pancreatitis and its complications, as well as for other pancreatic pathology. Fast the patient to reduce interference from overlying bowel gas, which may otherwise make visualization difficult. 
in young patients the pancreas is generally less fatty and therefore usually hypoechoic with age fatty replacement of pancreas can result in echogenicity similar to surrounding mesenteric fat measurements anteroposterior diameter head 34 mm body 29 mm tail 32 mm length between 12 and 20 cm pancreatic duct is less than or equal 3 mm spleen the measurement of spleen length is the optimally maximal distance ideally at the hilum on the longitudinal coronal view between the most supramedial and most inferior lateral points look at this image the upper limit of the normal adult splenic lens is traditionally sighted at 12 cm but lens upward of 40 cm can be seen in normal tall males 7 cm width 30 cm craniocotal diameter some causes of splenomegaly are hematological disease hemodynamic infectious storage diseases neoplastic traumatic or connective tissue disorders kidneys normal kidney size in adults varies with the height of the individual in general it decreases with the age and increases with body mass index the size of the kidneys is measured mainly by ultrasound although both CT and MRI scans also can be used for estimation of renal size. The mean average pool to pool length of an adult human kidney is between 9 and 40 cm in general. The left kidney is slightly longer than the right. Discrepancy more than 2 cm between two kidneys considered significant and the need further evaluation. Renal length less than 8 cm is definitely reduced, should be attributed to chronic renal failure. Adrenal glands Adrenals are paired organs of the endocrine system, often asymmetric in shape. The right adrenal gland is pyramidal in shape, whereas the left is semilunar or crescent shaped and somewhat larger. Each gland is enclosed in the perirenal fascia and each has a body and two limbs, a medial limb and a lateral limb. However, the right adrenal gland is usually more pyramidal in shape while the left adrenal gland is more crescentic. The adrenal glands lie superior and intermedial to the kidneys. The adrenal glands measure 3 cm in width, 5 cm in length, and up to 1 cm in thickness. Proportionally, the adrenal size is larger in neonates and infants, being almost one third of the size of the kidneys. Some causes of enlargement of adrenal glands, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, adrenal hemorrhage, adrenal neuroblastoma. Bowel Normal bowel caliber can be remembered using the 3, 6, 9 rule. Small bowel less than 3 cm, large bowel less than 6 cm, cecum and sigmoid below 9 cm. Bowel dilatation can be seen on ultrasound, but this is usually dependent on the bowel being fluid filled and there is no gas filled bowel anteriorly. Causes of small bowel wall thickening, Henochstein line purpura, Crohn's disease. Lymphoma Causes of colon wall thickening Inflammatory bowel disease Hemolytic uremic syndrome Pseudomembranous colitis Abdominal aorta Abdominal aorta spans from T12 to L4 spinal levels below the diaphragm. The proximal and the mid-abdominal aorta are collectively known as the suprarenal abdominal aorta. The distal abdominal aorta is considered the infrarenal abdominal aorta. Measurements Normal abdominal aorta range from 1.5 to 2.5 cm. Ectatic aorta 
between 2.5 to 3 cm aortic aneurysm more than 3 cm adult tests the normal tests have a homogeneous moderately echogenic pattern a testicle is surrounded by a thin echogenic fibrous bands which represents the visceral component of the tunica vaginalis and the tunica albuginea. Normal adult testes are ovoid and they measure about 3 cm anteroposterior, 2 to cm width, 4 to 5 cm length with a volume of 12.5 to 90 mm. The size of the testicle varies with age, increasing in size from birth to puberty and then decreasing later in life. Thyroid gland The normal thyroid gland has a smooth contour. The echo pattern of the parenchyma is homogeneous and hyperechoic compared with the surrounding muscles. In the longitudinal plane, the craniocaudal longitudinal diameter is measured from the upper to the lower pole. In the transverse plane, the maximum width and the depth diameters are determined. The two thyroid loops are measured separately. Their volumes are calculated and added together. The normal range for the total thyroid volume in adults is from 8 to 18 milliliters for women and from 9 to 25 milliliters for men. Measurement of the loops, right or left loop, 1.5 cm cross 1.5 cm cross 4 cm and the isthmus is less than 0.4 cm. Thyroid gland weighs about 20 grams. Urinary bladder. Bladder ultrasound is non-invasive, readily accessible, and easy to use. Bladder wall thickness, best measured at the base. Looking at this image, look for parallel white lines. They should be less than 4 mm apart. Causes of diffuse bladder wall thickening 1. Bladder outlet obstruction 2. Neurogenic bladder 3. Infectious cystitis 4. Cystitis from radiation or chemotherapy Lymph nodes Normal lymph nodes appear sonographically as flattened hypoechogenic structures. In some cases of chronic inflammation, obesity, and degenerative changes, leading to benign fatty replacement of lymphoid tissue. These fatty deposits are beginning in the center of the lymph node and progressing towards the periphery. Benign nodes have been found to have a long axis diameter, at least two times the short axis diameter, with a shape index of less than 0.5, corresponding to an oval shape. Malignant nodes have been found to have a shape index of greater than 0.5 corresponding to a more rounded shape. Normal lymph nodes are discrete, not tender, and mobile without fixation to the underlying tissues. Significant enlargement of the lymph nodes if it is more than 1 cm in cervical and axillary lymph node and if it is more than 1.5 cm in inguinal lymph nodes. Gray scale parameters that favor malignancy. The lymph nodes appear larger in size and rounded in shape. Echogenicity predominantly hypoechoic, although metastatic lymph nodes from papillary thyroid carcinoma tend to be hyperechoic. Heterogeneous echotexture. Loss of the central fatty hilum or thinning of the hilum, eccentric versus concentric thickening of the cortex, presence of microcalcifications, necrosis, ill-defined capsular margins. Color Doppler features that favor malignancy. 1. Peripheral or mixed peripheral central blood vessels. 2. High resistance waveform. 3. Apparent vessels. Uterus. The overall uterine length is evaluated in the long axis from the fundus to the cervix. The depth anteroposterior diameter is measured from the anterior to the posterior wall and perpendicular to the lens. 
The size of the uterus varies with age and ability. Average length between 6 to 8 cm Anteroposterior diameter between 3 and 4 cm Transverse diameter 5 cm Ovaries Ovarian volume is calculated using the formula length cross width cross height cross 0.523 Ovaries are identified by internal iliac artery elliptical shape multiple small cysts representing follicles size about 4 times 3 times 2 cm mean volume about 10 cm the dominant follicle from 2 to 2.5 cm endometrium the endometrium should be measured in the long axis or sagittal plane ideally on transvaginal scanning with the entirety of the endometrial lining through to the endocervical canal in view. The measurement is of the thickest echogenic area from one basal endometrial interface across the endometrial canal to the other basal surface. Care should be taken not to include hypoechoic myometrium or intrauterine fluid in this measurement. The normal endometrium changes in appearance as well as in thickness throughout the menstrual cycle. In the menstrual and early proliferative phase, it is a thin, brightly echogenic strip comprising of the basal layer. Figure 1. Minimal fluid can be appreciated into vaginally within the endometrium in the menstrual phase. In the late proliferative phase, it develops a trilaminar appearance, outer echogenic basal layer, middle hypoechoic functional layer, and an inner echogenic strip at the central interface. Figure 2. In the secretory phase, it is at the thickest up to 16 mm and becomes uniformly echogenic as the functional layer becomes edematous and isoechoic to the basal layer. Figure 3. Endometrial thickness in premenopausal patients, there is a significant variation at different stages of the menstrual cycle. Endometrial thickness in premenopausal patients, there is significant variation at different stages of the menstrual cycle. During menstruation, it is from 2 to 4 mm. At early proliferative phase, it is 5 to 7 mm. At late proliferative phase, it is up to 11 mm. At secretory phase, it is from 7 to 16 mm. Following dilatation and curettage or spontaneous abortion, it is less than 5 mm. If it is thicker, consider retained products of conception. But postmenopausal endometrial thickness is typically less than 5 mm in postmenopausal women. Thank you, everyone. Hoping you enjoy our lecture, you can follow us at Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and you can visit our blog, Radiology Interesting Update. Thank you and goodbye.